Hello everyone, this is Alfia Sando. Today I'm going to talk about how to implement our customized shell pointer. If you like the video, please support me by subscribing my channel. You also can find the complete code uh, in my blog, uh, the link provided below. And you also can find the uh, whole video list uh, sorted by a category in a Google Sheet in video description below. Before to implement the shell pointer, let it ask uh, ask for uh, one question. What, what's the shell pointer? The shell pointer is a smart pointer, which is a stacked or allocate object that wrap a normal pointer. Another important feature for shell pointer is that when the last shell pointer for an object in memory is destructed, the wrapped pointer will also be deleted. This is a very important feature. So those two features will be a, the main um, skeleton for us to implement the shell pointer. And the second feature is exactly the advantage of shell pointer compared with a normal pointer because it helps the shell pointer automatically release the memory when uh, the last one uh, is disrupted. So it can avoid a memory leak issues uh, in generally uh, when we use a normal pointer. However, shell pointer cannot be used everywhere. It has tricky situation, for example, circular references I'm planning to building another video to expand this and uh, uh, provide a solution for this. Please check back these videos. I will put the, the link for that videos in the wrap top button. SharePoint will also have performance bottleneck when we implement multi-thread performance since creating, copying, destructing of SharePoint need to be atomic operation, which means when we do this operation, all the threads probably need to wait for this operation to be completed. OK, we are. Let's uh, take a look at uh, the structure of the shell point of my implementation. In private views, we have two uh, container in shell pointers, uh, mdata contains the normal pointer uh, point to the data. And n on the saw count basically is, is tell us how many shell pointer own this normal pointer. They all initialized by non pointer when it's not initialized. Also we have a clean up UTL function here. It will be directly using the destructor and it's also will be using the assignment operation which I will explain later. We dis I disable the default constructor since uh, if there's no data input uh, to initialize the shell point like this way, basically it's, no, it's meaningless. So here I implement the uh, constructors when uh, a data is input. Then m on the sort data becomes first normal pointers to hold this data, and m on score count will be just one. We also need to implement a copy constructor, which you will explain later, uh, as well as a move constructor. Then we also provide a, a difference uh, by using operation star, uh, also provide a, to to get a normal pointer from the outside uh, to define the operator uh, forward arrow. In this class, we also support copy assignment and move assignment. Uh, one thing you may have questioned that why the assignment operator need to be written as reference. So I'm going to explain here. here. So apparently we have two options, return a copy or return a reference. So return a reference can 
um, solve uh, here the scenario number one. Uh, this is called chain assignment. If we define the uh, equation as follows, basically in, by default we think we want to do the a equal to b and the a and b both equal to c. So think about if we return by copy, what will happen? So a equal to b will return a copy of a. Then the computer will implement a equal to c. At this time, a actually is not changed because a equal to b is written a copy of a. So this is what we want. So what we want is to uh, return as reference. So a equal to b will return the reference of a. And when we implement a equal to c, the a will be ultimately updated. Another good thing of return as reference is to avoid extra copy uh, constructor and destructor cost. We can demonstrate this also use the uh, example, chain assignment example. So if we return as copy a equal to b, we will construct a copy of a. And when we done a equal to c, we will destruct a, right? Destruct a copy of a. So that's the additional cost. Uh, for construction destruction. Then if we return as reference, we don't have this worry. Then that's why um, it had the second one advantage. Then let's move forward to expand the details for constructors. So the first constructor is a copy constructor. We want to copy over all the data from the another pointer. So of course we copy the data and copy the count. One thing we need to be careful is that uh, another pointer can be uninitialized at this point. So it can be equal to non-pointer. So we want to check uh, whether it's initialized. So if it's initialized, we want to increment the count right now. Reversely, if it's non-pointer, which means this count is also non-pointer. So if we increment it here, we will uh, run, run an error. So that's how the if check here. So if we do the uh, copy constructor, which means we have additional shell pointer to use that normal pointer, so we have to increment the count. So next is the move constructor. The behavior of move constructor is we want to copy all data from another pointer, and we will, we need to reset another pointer. Since we move another pointers, uh, another pointer is not on the original data anymore. First line, second line, same. Um, third line, fourth line is the straightforward. We just uh, uh, re reinitialize the data count as a non-pointer. So now let's look at the clean up function first, since you will use directly in the destructor. At first, we will check the count again, whether it's equal to non-pointer. It's the same if we check the data or count. If it's non-pointer, of course, we won't do any later operation. So if it's not non-pointer, we will decrement the count because during the destruction, we want to release the ownership of this share pointer for data. So we decrement the counter. Another thing we need to do is that uh, to implement the second features I mentioned in the first slide. If this is the last share pointer to own this data, we need to release the memory, right? So after we done the cleaning up, um, let's go over to the assignment operator because uh, those two operators will also use cleaning up function. So first, copy assignment. We want to uh, our shell point to own another point data. Also, we want to clean up 
our current um, normal pointer. So we first call the clean up. It will decrement the count. If it's equal to zero, we need to release. Then we uh, copy over the another point data. Again, we want to check the another pointer data is not on num pointer. Then we uh, increase the uh, the count. Inventory we return the the reference of that. For the move assignment, it's kind of have same behavior as uh, move constructor, uh, and as well as uh, copy assignment. We will clean up first, then we copy the data from another pointer. We need to reinitialize another pointer uh, as a non pointer. Okay, that's all about uh, implement the shell pointer. Hope you like these videos. Um, please add your comment and uh, suggesting in the video below. See you next time.